ladies and gentlemen, once again, this is Jeremy Smith. One of the biggest questions I get on this channel is how does camera A compare to camera B? And this is something that I'm always looking to help out you guys with. Um, I know that I can't always tell you exactly which camera to buy because it's going to depend on your particular preferences. But what I do want to do is give you guys an idea of all the features that both cameras have so that way you can kind of make an informed decision. Now I'm always reading the comments <clears throat> and just because you haven't seen a camera on this channel it doesn't mean that I'm not going to be looking at it. Do keep in mind though I can't get my hands on just every camera in existence but just know that I'm constantly working to get my hands on new and exciting cameras for us all to take a look at. Today I decided to start out with some entry level models uh, the Canon Rebel T6 and the Nikon D3400. Both these cameras are entry level, so I figure a lot of users are going to be trying to decide between these two as their first DSLR. Anyways guys, let's go ahead and take a closer look at these cameras, and we'll see how they compare to each other. Taking a closer look at the Nikon D3400 and the Canon Rebel T6, first thing to keep in mind about these is that they are both entry level DSLRs. So there's no doubt going to be some features that are missing from both of them. Um, no Nikon or Canon is not going to start putting features found on their $1,500 cameras on $500 cameras. That's just not going to happen. There wouldn't be any reason for the $1,500 camera to exist if that were the case. Um, the other thing to keep in mind is, guys, I'm going to provide all the information for you, but I can't tell you exactly which camera to buy. That's going to come down to your own preference, but with the information that I provide, you guys can make an informed decision. Okay, so first up, we'll start off with the Canon. That way my Nikon bias doesn't show too much. <laughs> no, just kidding. At least mostly. Okay, so some things I love about the Canon. Number one is the Wi-Fi capability. Now, this camera's wireless capability, I feel, is much better than on Nikon. Now, Nikon, they've introduced SnapBridge. As you guys know, I've been over this before. There's still lots of kinks to work out with SnapBridge. And unfortunately, on the 3400, it uses Bluetooth, and not Bluetooth and Wi-Fi like, like some of the higher Nikon models. So basically, on SnapBridge, you're limited to being able to just transfer images. You cannot use the SnapBridge on the 3400 to actually remotely control the camera. On the Canon, you can still remotely control it, plus the Wi-Fi capability on this camera just seems to be a lot more reliable. So definitely, if wireless capabilities are a main priority for you, I would encourage you to go with the Canon in that regard. The other thing that I like about the Canon is that they haven't really done anything to like remove features that had a purpose. Um, on the Nikon D3400, for whatever reason, Nikon, they decided to remove the center cleaning mechanism. So I'm not really sure why they would do that. Um, it's a very strange move in 2017, but they did remove it, so that's kind of odd. Canon did no such thing. Going back to that wireless briefly too, the Canon actually has NFC as well, so that's something else. Once again, you have to go up to like the 5600 at Nikon to get that. On the Canon, we also have a physical remote port here, so if you want to plug in a cable remote, you can do that. Curiously enough though, uh, as is the case with many Canons, you get the wide remote, but you lose the infrared remote. Some things that are kind of downsides on the Canon. In the past, Canon was known for very, very good video capability, and Canon basically started the whole DSLR video revolution. Unfortunately on this camera though, if we go into its video modes, so let's do that. I suppose that's a bit of a con too, having to actually flip to it on the dial. But if we look at the actual video settings in the menu here, um, you guys will notice that if we're shooting in 1080p, we are limited to 30 frames a second. Uh, now this may not be a big deal for most entry level users, but it is noteworthy. The biggest downside on this camera's video though, in my opinion, is that you actually have no autofocus in video mode. Now Canon, they have an excellent autofocus system to use for video, but it's just not found on this camera. You know, you have to go up to the Rebel T6i to be able to get that. So on this one, you either have to manually focus or you just have to like half pressure shutter button and lock the focus 
and then it's basically locked until you stop recording again and then refocus or like I say you just have to manual focus so definitely kind of some downsides there if we switch over to the Nikon we may as well just start off by looking at its video since we were looking at that last on the Canon if I come in here to the video mode on the Nikon you will notice that we do have the ability to do 1080p at up to 60 frames a second and while Nikon's autofocus in video mode is not like blazing fast like the Canon STM, um, it has gotten much, much better whenever we have the newer Nikon, a newer Nikon AFP lens on. So not quite dual pixel CMOS and all that, but it's actually very good. And seeing how the T6 can't autofocus at all in video mode, we definitely have to give the Nikon the advantage there. On this one, if we look over to the side of it, just like on the Canon, as I mentioned, there is no microphone jack. However, there's also no wired remote jack as well. But, interestingly enough, you do get the infrared remote. So, there you have it there. If you're doing action photography, this is another area where I say uh, that the Nikon won't have an advantage. Basically, on this camera, you can do up to 5 frames per second whenever you're shooting a continuous burst which is like that. On the Canon, we're limited to about, uh, about three frames a second. So let's see, let's get out of that mode. So, you know, it's not slow if you're coming from a compact camera. But yes, the Nikon is definitely faster. And once again, to get speed uh, that you would see in the Nikon, you kind of have to bump up to the Canon Rebel T6i to be able to get that. So all in all, pretty good cameras. Quick rundown, I'd say video, uh, the Nikon has an advantage there. Um, I would say action photography, the Nikon has the advantage there. Um, in terms of like really serious action photography though, it's important to note that I wouldn't really look at either of these cameras. I would go up to the Rebel T6i or to the Nikon D5600, at least if I were very serious about action. Um, even if you're an entry level user and you wanna capture like uh, your kiddos sports and things like that, you're still better off going up to the next level if possible. But if you're looking at this level, I'd say the Nikon has an advantage in that area. And I'd say it has an advantage in terms of video shooting. If you don't care as much about the video and you care mostly about taking uh, photographs and sharing them on social media and things like that, definitely the Canon has <clears throat> an advantage in that regard because the Wi-Fi capability is definitely superior to the Nikon as far as I'm concerned. Both these cameras are about the same size. And speaking of sharing pictures, a lot of people were going to ask me about image quality between these cameras. And on paper, the Nikon looks like it could be better. You know, it does have a slightly higher maximum ISO setting. It goes up to that 25,000 whatever setting. Um, basically, that high 25,000 ISO setting is pretty much useless. Um, I do have some sample images in the, in the uh, description below for you guys to take a look at. I shot them all in RAW as to not be limited by the camera's internal JPEG processing. And I just processed those images in Adobe Lightroom at the default settings. I did notice that the Canon has a tendency to shoot a little bit brighter than the Nikon. This is not necessarily a bad thing. Um, both cameras did do very good in terms of their uh, auto white balance performance. I shot on auto white balance on both and I set to F4, and then I just let the camera decide the exposure on its own with no compensation. And both cameras did pretty well. I thought it was interesting though that even though the Nikon doesn't have the optical low pass filter, especially at high ISO settings, I actually did get a little bit sharper results out of the Canon. And that's probably because on Canon, they've decided to have less noise suppression happening. Um, and no, I'm not talking about the setting in the camera, but even in RAW, there's still some internal noise reduction processes happening. Canon, they seem to favor greater detail and a bit more noise. Either way though, guys, I mean, looking at both these cameras, I don't think you're going to be disappointed with the image quality out of any of them. They're both gonna be very, very good. But you can look at those sample images and kind of come to your own conclusions about that as well. Anyways, guys, I hope this video helped out a lot. Write me in the comments below. 
and tell me which cameras you'd like to see compared because I definitely like to uh, read your feedback on that even though I don't have a chance to respond to everything. The other thing to keep in mind is I do like to often kind of, you know, preview the cameras I'm going to be testing. So be sure to follow me on Instagram at photogdaythegreat. And you can also see some of my random randomness and some of my other photography. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Until next time, this is Jeremy Smith signing off.